<laughs> How funny. Did you really think that we'd throw you a welcome party? I can hear the manager Jack's mocking voice coming from the other end of the phone. He even made me make a reservation for the party. I'm so angry at Jack for not being able to imagine that this is a nuisance to the restaurant. I don't need these kind of people in our company who can't take care of their own subordinates well and wasting food like that. My name is Troy Smith. I have been working at a food company's factory for six years now. It's a peaceful place to work with hardly any conflicts between staffs. I have learned my job and have no complaints about the comfortable work environment, but I also wanted to try something new. One day, as I was checking my email, I learned that the sales department was having an internal job opening. Speaking of the sales department, they are known to have a high turnover rate and the staffs all tend to quit in that department. The job of sales requires toughness, but apparently that's not all. In the department, there is a general manager, Jack, who pressures staffs, and a section chief, Steve, who tends to be very sarcastic. I have heard that these two are at the center of a bullying campaign against new recruits. Rumors like this even reach our factory. I wondered if they would be able to attract people to be new staffs at the sales department if there is a rumor going around like that. I don't know what kind of plan the department manager has to reduce the productivity of the employees like that. I went home and told my father, who lives with me, about the internal recruitment and the rumors about the sales department. My father and I are very close, and after work, we would share a drink together like this. My father is such a heavy drinker that even my mother gets angry with him, saying, It's bad for your health if you drink that much. My father was drunk, saying, You should change the sales department. My father would repeat the same words until he sobered up. Even as I answered yes, yes to him, I was still thinking about the internal recruitment process. Work has to be viewed from various angles and positions, or else one's perspective will become narrow. Troy, you're capable and smart, so all you need is just experience. You're young, so just try to challenge. These were my father's words when he was not yet drunk. I feel like I've been encouraged and pushed in my back by his positive words. All right then, let's try and challenge to something new. I decided to take the plunge and put my name forward for the company's internal job opening. However, I had no idea at the time that my decision would shake the company to its core. The attitude of the manager, Jack, of the sales department at the open recruitment interview was quite normal. He wasn't pressuring me, and he was kind, so I let my guard down. Then, on my first day since I got to the sales department, This is Troy Smith, who had transferred from the factory. I was introduced by the general manager in front of the sales department employees. When I went to greet everyone, Jack started speaking in a loud voice. I didn't expect a factory employee to come all the way over here. There were no other applicants, so I had no choice but to choose him. He'll probably be at the bottom of the department for the time being, so make sure that you all use him to your advantage. What? I was offended by his words, which sounded as if he was making fun of the factory workers. Then Steve, who is rumored to be the sarcastic section chief, interrupted. What can you do if all you can do is pack boxes of food? Our business partners don't come on a conveyor belt, you know. <laughs> Steve, perhaps amused by his own joke, is laughing by himself. I have no idea why that's funny. You're taking advantage of your position in the company and harassing me. What you just said is not what should come out from a manager like you, don't you think so? When I objected, Jack suddenly raised his voice. How dare a low-ranking person like you give me an opinion? I'm your boss, and you better listen to me. He hits the desk hard and intimidates me. I can't help but be stunned by his unreasonable words, but it would be better not to provoke him any further. Some male employees are grinning at me as I'm being yelled at. Some female employees are frightened by the sound of the department manager's voice. Fine. 
I understand. I only said that and went to my desk. I was not allowed to properly greet people, and I was filled with a sense of frustration at being reprimanded in front of everyone. I went home and complained to my father. My father is listening to the story calmly. Jack, that general manager is exactly like a problem child, huh? I wonder why the HR doesn't notice things like that. The sales department is separated from the other departments, and the general manager has a good public profile, so I think he's deceiving everyone. Even though they had a bad reputation, I didn't even notice it during the interview. If even one of us had run to the company's counseling center about Jack and Steve's bullies, the issue could have come to light. There may have been employees who couldn't stand the harassment by Jack and Steve and quietly left the company. At the very least, I had to protect the other employees. I vowed to do so, and from the next day onward, I endured the verbal abuse from Jack and Steve. Is it because someone came from the factory? Something stinks, doesn't it? Steve would say something terrible like that to me. As he said that, he made a gesture of picking his nose as if something was smelly, and laughed with the other employees. Jack would always yell at me nonstop. You haven't taken on any new clients yet. I told you to make hundred calls a day. Of course, hundred calls per day is just reckless. He probably just wanted to take it all out on me. If there is even the slightest mistake, he will yell at you in front of everyone. He would hit the desk and throw papers at us on a daily basis. Such days continued for about two months. Some of the employees in the sales department made fun of me, along with the general manager, while a few others looked at me with concern from afar. It was my father who kept me sane in this environment. When I go home, I have someone who understands me. That was the only thing that kept me going. Jack and Steve were not amused, perhaps because I never raised my voice at all. One day, they approached me, grinning. It's time to hold a welcome party for you, Troy. Just make a reservation at a restaurant of your choice. Make sure to reserve for forty people for this weekend. This weekend, I asked back. There are so many parties ongoing on the weekend during the springtime. Restaurants that can accommodate a large number of people must be reserved way beforehand. I wanted to ask why I had to reserve for a restaurant when it was a party for me. But I decided not to, since it would be too much hassle. While I was frantically looking for a restaurant after I got home, my father, who was turning all red from drinking again, approached me. If you're looking for a place to eat, how about that place? My father reminded me of a certain restaurant. It was a 15-minute walk from the office, but the atmosphere was nice and the food was good. I called the restaurant and was told that they happened to have a cancellation. I was relieved to hear that I could safely get a reservation for 40 people. The next day, I reported this to Jack and sent emails with the details of the drinking party to the employees who will be attending. Jack looked surprised that the reservation had been made, and then I saw him whispering something to Steve. On the day of the welcome party, since I was the one to organize it, I decided to head to the restaurant early. I waited on my own until the time to start the party, but. There were no signs of anyone showing up. Funny, the reservation time is at 7 p.m., right? I look at my watch, and it's already five minutes before 7 p.m. The drinking party is really today, right? Please don't tell me that you've got the schedule wrong. The restaurant owner looked all worried. It seems that she is getting nervous because there have been a lot of no-show cancellations at other restaurants recently. Concerned, I called Jack. However, there was an announcement that the power has been turned off when I called him. I called Steve, and I couldn't reach him as well. Why couldn't I reach the both of them? When I was being stunned, I received a call from Jack. Finally, I was worried because no one came. The other employees. When I answered the phone in a hurry, I heard Jack's loud laughter. <laughs> How funny! Did you really think that we'd hold a welcome party for you, to a person like you who used to be a factory worker? What do you mean? 
Even though I had a bad feeling, I asked Jack. The welcome party is just a joke, so just cancel the reservation. Of course, you better pay the cancellation fee on your own. If you want me to come, then make sure to plead me and kneel down. But I think if you do that, then people will see how desperate you are to have a welcome party for you. After saying that, Jack continued to laugh. How unbelievable. Doesn't he know that his actions will also cause trouble to the restaurant? Even if I do pay the cancellation fee, if things continue as they are, they will have to throw away the meals for 40 people. How can he not understand the importance of food while working at a food industry? We don't want that kind of employee in our company. I murmur on the phone. Huh? What did you say? Is the intention of the last minute cancellation not only for you, Jack, but also for Steve and the other employees? I asked calmly. That's right. Steve and the others don't want to eat with factory workers like you. There were some people who were confused, but I explained it all to them. So no one is coming. All right. Then everyone is fired. You all don't have to come to the company anymore. After saying that, I switched the call screen of my phone to video mode. Excuse me? Jack looked clueless as he had no idea what was going to happen next. But three seconds later, his face turned pale. C C O. Jack, you seem to have a rather arrogant attitude towards your subordinates, don't you? The CEO reflected on the screen and staring at Jack with a stern look on his face. Why is the CEO there at the restaurant? I laughed at Jack, who was clearly confused. I told the CEO about it. Since we live together, we talked every day about the welcome party and your behavior. Because, you see, he is my father. Your father is the CEO? Huh? Jack was panicking so much. You better come to the restaurant right now. My father, who's usually calm, yelled and hung up the phone. I came because it was your welcome party, but I didn't know it would turn out like this. Sis, I'm sorry to bother you too like this. I'll call my friends and the employees now, so please wait. After saying so, my father kept calling his friends or the employees one after another. Every day I complained about my work to my father, who's actually the CEO of the company. When I was assigned to the sales department and was verbally abused, my father said that he would do something about it. However, I wanted to solve it by myself, so I asked him to watch over me for a while. Only a few executives know that I am the CEO's son. I was concerned that if it became public that I was the CEO's son, everyone would be too nice to me and also pamper me. Besides, I myself didn't like being told that I got into the company through my father, so I kept quiet about it. Our last name, Smith, is common, so no one noticed it. And this restaurant I made a reservation for is run by my father's older sister, in other words, my aunt. People gathered at the restaurant one after another, and the seats were filled. Then Jack and Steve came running into the restaurant. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. They greeted my father right away. It's not me who you're apologizing to. It's to my son and the owner of this place, right? Jack glared at me all bitterly. Um, what do you mean by us being fired? Steve asks with a pale expression. Few people in the company know about it yet, but I've decided to retire soon and hand over the company to my son. In other words, I am the next CEO in line, and if I become the CEO, it means that I can dismiss the manager and the section chief. And I explained that was why that they were getting fired, but the manager raised his voice. All we did was just joke a bit. We get treated unfairly like this? I will sue you, you know. As soon as I started talking, instead of my father, their attitude changed. It's so easy to tell that it made me feel sick. Last minute cancellation like this is fraudulent obstruction of business, you know. I said so, but Jack did not stay silent. 
I told you to pay the cancellation fee. If you don't pay for it, it's your fault. You better pay up. Even though you're the next CEO, you're still the lowest rank in the sales department. Couldn't help but let out a big sigh at his disgusted words. You're threatening me, aren't you? I told you all in advance that the membership fee is fifty dollars per person, so it's strange that I'm the only one paying, isn't it? I took out the recorder from my pocket and showed it to the director. Words such as intentionally canceling at the last minute are also included in this. You really do like to intimidate people, huh, Jack? It seems that the employees at the internal consultation desk and the human resources staff were also intimidated by you. The recorder and my remarks made the director look pale. I've gone to the consultation desk and human resources to see if anyone has complained of any harassment made by Jack. However, both of them had inarticulate answers, and I knew something was wrong. I told them that I was the CEO's son, and that I would be succeeding the company in the future, and that I wanted them to cooperate in improving the company. Then there were several people from the sales department who complained of Jack's harassment, but it seems that he had put pressure on them to cover it up. While threatening to cover it up, Jack also has a big body and very intimidating glare. If threatened by such a man like him, female employees in particular are sure to be very scared. They cried and told me that they had listened to what he said because they were afraid of him. Again, my heart ached of seeing the employees being like that. In the past, I contacted a man who quit after receiving harassment from Jack. Then he showed me the diary where he wrote down the abusive words that were thrown to him every day. Probably because he had a grudge against the director. If I had this, I could sue Jack for harassment, so I decided to fight together with him. He said he wanted to claim compensation and the cost of going to therapy for treatment. He wants to sue me that bad that he's getting carried away, huh? Even after all this, Jack still doesn't think that it's his fault. It seems I still need to teach him a lesson. Harassment is not the only problem. Jack, you also forged receipts, right? It took me two months to collect the evidence. Jack turned pale this time. Jack had a favorite restaurant that he would use to serve his clients. It's normal to get a receipt because you can get reimbursed for the expenses you used for the company's clients. I was sometimes ordered to pick up and drop him off by car when he had to attend his clients. While I was waiting for Jack, while he was paying, I noticed that he had received another receipt. At a glance, I saw that it was a blank receipt. This happened several times, and I suspected that Jack was writing down amounts on blank receipts and lying about the forged receipts. When I asked the accounting department to show me the recent receipts, I found that the receipts for the restaurant had been submitted on a day when he didn't attend any clients. Until now, no employee in the department would have disobeyed him, so he probably thought that he would not be pointed out, even if he had a blank receipt. I will investigate in detail from now on, but what you did is a crime. When I say that, Jack looks frustrated. Crap! I did it so discreetly so that I won't be found out. In the first place, since the monthly salary is low, I had no choice but to earn pocket money like that. It's not my fault. He made ridiculous excuses like this. My father looked at me with an exasperated expression and said he would leave the rest to me. So you'd even do crime because your salary was low? I don't think you should even be in the position you're in right now. After all, what you did, in accordance with company regulations, you will be subjected to disciplinary dismissal. Please be prepared. Hearing my words, Jack fell to his knees in desperation. As for Steve, he frantically pleaded with tears in his eyes. I didn't know anything. Even though the restaurant was lively with the party, Jack and Steve only looked very depressing. After that, it will be necessary to cooperate with related parties and decide about Jack and Steve. I didn't notice about any of this, so I'm even more convinced that I should be retiring. I'll leave it up to you from now on. 
I nodded strongly at my father's words. In the end, Jack was charged with criminal charges for forging receipts. Since Jack had been doing it repeatedly over the years, the amount was quite large. In addition to refunding the full amount, the director was also charged with compensation for harassing victims and for the victims' medical expenses. And of course, it was a disciplinary dismissal. If Jack quits the company at that age, it should be difficult for him to find a new job. I don't know what happened to him after he was fired. By the way, as a result of the investigation, Steve was not involved in the forgery of the receipt. However, an employee in the sales department raised his voice that Steve was also harassing staffs, so he was judged to be malicious and demoted to a regular employee. Now he seems to be working alone in the corner of the company with no one to deal with him. I'm sure there must be other employees who were being on Jack and Steve's side, bullying the new recruits. However, Looking at the future of Jack and Steve, and what happened to them, I don't think they'll be doing that in the future. Thank you for infiltrating the sales department. To celebrate my inauguration as the CEO, my father gave me a gift of money. My father complimented me, saying that I did a good job. Well, I didn't mean to infiltrate, you know. I accepted the gift with a wry smile. From now on, I will train to be a CEO. My job is to create an environment where all the employees can work comfortably.